everybody, welcome back to Don 10. It's your boy. We're back with some gecko content, and today we're up against Red Purple Law with the updated OPO6 cards in it. Red Purple Law is a force to be reckoned with. Let's see if we can handle it today. We go first, we won the die roll. We're also hitting that Perona on turn one. Oh, so beautiful. All right, we flip over a Absalom, and we flip over an Absalom and a Great Eruption. We make him discard, and then six into life. He chooses to take, and we pass it on over. If I'm correct here, he has a pretty explosive turn one or turn two as well. I'm pretty sure he floods the board with two bodies, and then attacks for five. Yeah. No trigger off the first life. It's kind of neat though, we had another hog back. We needed that. <laughs> Plays out the ulti, minuses the Don to put out the page one. That's such a nasty combo for four Don. That's so crazy. It also sets him to be on the same Don as me so that he can play Reju the next turn if he wants to. It's just crazy. Like he could just like drop it on curve and swing for six if he needed to. Like, he goes two sixes, a five, and then just play Reju. That's insane value. Um, it looks like for us, we're going to just go for five into life, and then I'm pretty sure we're just going to drop a great eruption and get the Absalom back out of life and pop the page one. That seems like a good idea. I wish I could, like, pop both things out of play this turn, but that's not quite possible. So we're just going to go seven into life, do the effect, Trash another Absalom. We flip over the Moria, which is really sick. We're going to put the two Great Eruptions to the bottom of the deck with the Absalom ability, popping the page one. Um, we do have two Hogbacks in hand that we can start getting rid of so that we can buy back this Gecko Moria out of trash so we can guarantee one of the big bodies. And we do have a Sabo for next turn, so that's just going to be really cool. Because I'm pretty sure he just bottom decks the Absalom here, which I'm really happy we trashed the other one because now it's in the bin and we'll still be able to get one back later. But we did flip over a Luchi with that 8 cost Moria, so we're looking pretty good. And we do have him down to 2 life already while we're sitting at 4, so we're kind of comfortable because we can just consistently put in 5k bodies. But... The minute he starts dropping, like, kids and stuff like that, and I have to always be careful in this match to never get up to seven cards in hand. Otherwise, that just gives him free value out of law, and we want to just make sure that never happens. So we just constantly keep ourselves at six or lower, the sweet spot into the red-purple law matchup. We are going to get our characters bottom decked a lot in this match, and usually it's like Sabos and Borsalinos, but... You know, doing it to the Absaloms are, are, is actually super gas because it is one of our KO effects. And we only run, I believe, seven or eight bodies that KO and then one body that can tra make your opponent trash. Of, well, you trash an opponent's four or less, which is the new Brook. So he does bring out the Reju and decides to draw two cards. Bottom decks the Absalom and brings out... A Zoro. What a what a card. So now he's got three really good attacks here. Or two or three fives. That's really good for this turn, seeing how it's very early. So we counter out a one. We decide or he goes at the Perona for both of them. So we countered out a one so that one would have to go one more would have to go into it. And we lucked out and hit the Ice Age off of the life, so we were able to pop the Zoro. Not really having to deal with it now. I mean, it would have been an easy Luchi target later, but that's fine. So now we're on seven Don turn. So we need to get Hog back in play this turn. And I don't think that's possible. So I think our idea is maybe just go seven into, or here, or we could go Ice Age on the Reju, right? We can go Ice Age on the Reju. Yep, and then we can Absalom, I'm pretty sure. 
Oh no. Okay, so the idea is go nine into the ulti, get Absalom and clear board. I think that's what's going through brain my brain right now. And I'm I'm thinking that's actually a super sick move because it actually does clear board this turn. Makes him have to utilize or I actually don't give him too many things to bottom deck. Um I do give him the other Absalom, but we do have the Luchi in the bin, which I know is solid with the Gecko that we're going to buy back next turn. Because we do, since we didn't do it this turn, we are forced to um, get Hog back out of trash next turn so that we can get the Gecko, which we really, really want to drop as fast as possible. And he is only at four Dawn this turn, which is super gnarly. So, like, we've set him back to no characters with only four Dawn. So he doesn't have much to work with. Like, and if he chooses to leader ability this turn, then he's sending himself back to one Don. And, like, only one character in play, which I can easily pop. You know what I mean? Like, because it's not going to be that turn, but it'll be the following turn. And I have the Luchi combo the following turn, which means I'm probably getting rid of two things. So he just goes nine heavy. And we find a Rebecca, which, by the way, we dropped uh, the number of Rebeccas in the deck because I picked up some Helmeppos. So I dropped a Rebecca down to two, and now we're up to three Helmeppos, and I got rid of the one of Kobe. I still wanted to keep two Rebeccas because Rebecca in the late game, you can just, like, go Rebecca into Sabo and use the Rebecca to buy back another 2K. Because, like, it buys back Perona, which is not the worst. Like, I don't necessarily need to get the the body off of her. But that's why I dropped her down to two. So we go six with the Absalom, six with leader, use effect, get back hog back so that we can buy back the A-cost gecko. And we're, st I believe we stick one of our Rob Luchis, because we have two now in the bin, and the Brook to the bottom of the deck because they are just solid KO cards for later. Also, it didn't really matter what went to the bottom. I just more or less wanted to keep the 2Ks that were buyback, that were able to be bought back, and the 2 drops for the 8 cost Gecko the following turn. So then we just drop Sabo, and we trash 2 Hogbacks, which is that's just fine by me. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. And then we pass it on over. So now our stuff can't be KO'd. He can bottom deck some things. He can attack the Absalom. But then if he attacks the Absalom, he's not bottom decking it, which is fantastic for us because we would rather it be in the trash. Seeing as now our only KO effect is Rob Lucci in the bin. But if he's just going blocker plus leader effect this turn, like... Yeah, he wants to get rid of that Sabo. So since he went and did this route, now he's going down to three. But if he has a ramp card here, which he does, he has the Beppo. So he gets one back and then one back active from Kid. So now he's up to five down again, which is pretty good. Um, so now now the Laws deck is seeming like it's going to start taking off here. But with this eight cost Gecko in hand, we're just... We're, we're sitting pretty solid. So he decided to play Gordon and bottom deck it to make the Absalom smaller and swing into it, which I thought that was a little fishy. Like he probably could have not did that and just still done the same thing and probably got away with it and kept the Gordon, but it is what it is. He did it. So we're ice aging the kid here. And realistically we could just drop the gecko swing for a six, a five and a six here and keep the Siru in hand, bringing out the Helmeppo. But I really wanted to play the Inupe with the Rob Lucci so that I could get more card value into my hand um, instead of just sitting on a 2K. Like, I wanted to get some of the other cards that weren't 2Ks out of hand into more 2Ks, and we found one. So we replaced the one, got rid of the two uh, 1Ks, so now our hand is just 2Ks. And with the Rob Lucci effect, we're going to put one Hog back, one Rebecca, and the Ice Age to the bottom of the deck, KOing both of those characters that were put into play, and then go two fives. But yes, you can take the route of putting the Helmeppo in the spot of Anupe here and still get the same thing done, keeping the Siru in hand and swinging for five and six. That 
more like 99% of the time is the more valuable play. But I just wanted to see what this would have like what would happen if I could filter all these 1Ks out of my hand and make them 2Ks and it worked out. So now I am sitting on 3 2Ks, 2 life. Um he has to deal with my board or he's going to die. Like he's at 0 life. So that's the situation we've backed him into. But future self just put the home up bow into play and keep the 2k in hand. <laughs> so he plays out another kid, which, by the way, I gotta say, these Altar kids, they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. But we have all of our Anupes at pre release stamped, so I'm pretty happy about that. It's the only thing in the deck that's max rarity outside of the leader. <laughs> so he decides to bottom deck the Anupe and just put out a gordon and i that kind of told to me with him having only a couple cards in hand that this game's pretty much mine and we can secure it next turn there's nothing he can really put into play this turn that would like win him the game and with him only having one blocker and not putting out another one off of leader ability there that like definitely foretold that this game is pretty much mine but he does try to clear board there, which is leaving me with three attacks. So, you know, he could have some, he could like have Rad Beam. You know, that could be sketch. Rad Beam plus 2k could be weird. But if I do my math right, we should get this game. Because I could just go, he's got two cards in hand. So you just go eight with uh, Luchi. But we decide to go six. Force a one or 2k out of hand. But because he's at zero life, this is less sketchy to do it this way. So we just go nine. And he goes to flip the 2k over, but I remind him that he does have a blocker and that I do just go in. But, yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We got another game here. See you next time. Smash that join button. Get me a new mic. Love you guys.